Hey guys, Jim here. So the tutorial for this month is lip balm. I have two recipes that I use and I'll provide both of them to you guys, but we're just gonna go over one. Um, I'm gonna do my standard lip balm and um, just making sure this thing is good and had a, oh, it's on the outside. I was like, there's something on my jar. It's not, it's on the outside. <laughs> okay, so my standard lip balm recipe is 20% beeswax, 40% rice bran oil, 25% cocoa butter, or coconut oil, excuse me, and 15% cocoa butter and 2% flavor oil. Now, we at Bee Scented have recently got in some lip balm supplies and um, so I thought it would be a great tutorial for this month. So we have five lip balm flavors. One is on back order. So I'm going to show you the four we currently have on hand. We have the wild grape. Smells amazing. Now these are a two ounce dropper bottle but there's only one and a half ounces of flavor oil because that is all that would fit in there. I couldn't get two ounces. <clears throat> uh, we have vanilla, we have apple, and then we have strawberry shortcake. And so that's what we're going to start with. Uh, I'm just going to make one today. Uh, when I make lip balm, I do about 50 at a time. Uh, I'll give you a recipe that will do the 50, it's approximately 50, because sometimes um, when you're weighing such small increments, it can vary slightly. So I do an approximate that uh, we'll know for sure when we're done uh, if this recipe yields 50 or if I get 48 or 52, etc. Um, and then I'll also do a recipe that yields like 18. So you don't have to, if you don't want to make that many at one time, you don't have to. So I have, you guys can see those right there. Um, there's two stacks of 25 uh, lip balm tubes that are banded together with a rubber band. Now we do carry the lip balm filling trays, but this is how I have always filled my lip balms and it's how I'm comfortable, so that's what I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to measure out all of my ingredients in a heat safe container. You can do this over a double boiler or you could do short bursts in the microwave. It's whatever you prefer. There's no right or wrong way you can do either. So I need 108 grams, there we go, of rice bran. So I'm going to measure that out first. You can measure these completely separate if you're not comfortable measuring into a single container. I'm at 106, 7, 8. On the dot, 108. Okay. Uh, I need 67 and a half grams of coconut oil. Hold on just a second, I gotta open my container. Okay, seems like I'm always forgetting to do something when I'm going to do these tutorials. It never fails. Now, one of the reasons, like a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you use shea butter? Well, shea butter is very temperamental. Um, I have found that in a lip balm, over time, it can go grainy. Your lip balm may be fine at first, but over the course of a few months, you can get little white beads um, come up on your lip balm, which is just the shea butter doing what it does. And if your container won't do half of a half a gram, just round up to the next one. It's totally okay. All right, I went to 68 grams because mine does not do half. But anyways, that is why I use cocoa butter versus uh, shea butter in my lip balms. I learned that the hard way. 
right, so next is our beeswax. And we carry all these supplies on to be scented. I need 54 grams. I have a big chunk of beeswax in here that I need to break down. And I'm okay using my hands because I've got gloves on. Now, if I didn't have gloves on, of course, wouldn't be cramming my hand down in here. There we go. And now we are going to do our cocoa butter. And just a minute, guys. Okay, sorry, guys. Interruption there with the mailman. So, okay, so the cocoa butter, uh, we have these wonderful wafers here at Be Scented that you can use. Absolutely amazing. And these ones have the natural cocoa scent. So that scent can and will come through in the finished product. So keep that in mind. So for these, I need 41 grams. So I may do the vanilla for this one. And then when I go to do a different scent, uh, I'll probably get the ivory uh, cocoa butter that is unscented. All right, 41. Now, we will melt this and then do the flavoring after this is melted. So I'll be right back. Okay guys, so this took about two and a half minutes and 30 second burst in the microwave to get all of this melted. Now, I'm going to be using one of these handy dandy little pipettes. We carry them on Bee Scented. If you don't have them, I highly suggest you to get some. They're the best little things ever. So, for the flavor, I need five grams. And we're gonna use vanilla. And like I said, I'm just going to use this wonderful pipette, or this little, um, has the dropper. It's going to make this so much easier for us. Alright, we're at two, three, this is a lot, there's four. I'm gonna go easy for the last one here. Touch it, just, okay, yeah, went up to five. Now, I can honestly tell you that less is more when you are making lip balm. Just because you think it may taste or smell or whatever better with more flavor, it won't. If anything, it will turn bitter on you. So, less is more. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move these down onto my work surface here. And if this starts to set up on you, you very well can pop it back in the microwave. <clears throat> and I may have to, because I try to um, only melt it as, you know, as little as possible. And I just, with these little, I mean, yeah, it takes time. This is how I like to do it. Just very slowly fill these up. And sometimes I make a mess and I spill it. That's okay. I clean it up when it gets hard. And it really doesn't take them 
five minutes, ten minutes to sit. I'm not probably going to do all of them on camera here. Bring you guys back when I'm done because that will be boring. But it's probably going to take me about five minutes to fill all of these. And you will have some amazing lip balm. I do not try to go back and add more. If you get a little sinkhole, I don't worry about it. I do try to mound it up just a hair when I'm pouring it but as you can see the ones that I've started out with first are almost completely set Alright guys, I'm going to pause you and I'll bring you back. I've got all of these filled. And I can show you my label. I'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, so I'm done. I actually ended up with 50... I probably would have ended up with 60... Um, but generally sometimes when you get to the end and it starts hardening it up, you don't want to keep putting it right back in the microwave to, you know, to get it liquid. So I kind of give up. <laughs> like, it's not a lot, but here's what's in my container, as you can see. Just a teeny, I probably could have gotten one more, but I said it'll be okay. So what I'm going to do normally is I try to put the lids on while they are uh, still tethered together with the rubber band. This one, my rubber band broke. Um, it's sitting right there. So I'm going to have to just carefully do them and try not to mess them up. So I try to do this with them together. That way I don't touch anything. Um... You want to keep these as sanitary as possible when you're doing something like this. So I try to do it and keep them all together, but just going to have to do those back there one by one. Carefully. And that's okay. I have one here that looks kind of rough. It'll probably be mine. Once I get all of my lids on, then I can take my gloves off and feel uh, comfortable handling them without my gloves. And then if you get any leak down the sides, and I have, you just want to use a paper towel and rubbing alcohol. And it's like spray your paper towel with rubbing alcohol and it will um, come right off. So this one, I'll put a lid on and it's going to be mine, but it kind of looks wonky. So I'll set it off to the side. And these... I'll just do one by one carefully. I can do them faster if they're all together. So 
So this recipe, like I said, it's always an approximate on how many I'm going to get. Um, because the lip balm tubes are supposed to hold 0.15 ounces. And no matter how many times I make my recipe to be 0.15 ounce times 50 and then divide it up, it just sometimes isn't perfect. Almost there. And I've got a lip balm back here. Um, it's my old labels, but I'll show it to you. Now, when you're selling lip balm, you do have to use the INCI name of your ingredients. You can, you can have the common name with it, but it has to be labeled with INCI. They're still a little warm. But just like that, I have quickly made 59 lip balm tubes, or lip balms, scented in vanilla. Get these all cleaned up and labels made after the video, but I will show you guys the one that I have sitting back here. All right. So here is the coconut one that I made. It has my business name, the scent, lip balm, and then my ingredients. And as you can see, I have the INCI name for rice bran. I have the INCI for the coconut oil. There's beeswax. Beeswax is beeswax. And then this one recipe, I used mango butter. And then you have your flavor oil. And then I have your net weight. And then you also have it in grams. And these are sealed. I have a shrink wrap tube on them. And I put a little note to twist the cap to open and discontinue use if irritation occurs. So that is how I do my labels. All right, guys. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. The only other thing is if you want to make a recipe that has uh, menthol in it, the cooling sensation, you can. And I have a recipe where I do that. And I use one and a half grams or one and a half percent of menthol. Um, so what I do in order to get the menthol in the ratio, I drop my uh, rice bran oil down one and a half percent. So I drop it down to 38 and a half instead of 40. And then I add in the menthol to get my um, totals. And your menthol will have to be dissolved in your flavor, in the oil. Um, you dissolve it in the oil and then you can add it to your mix. Because uh, either that or you can add the menthol after your, after your oils and butters are melted. And you can add it in then and get it to dissolve. You'll just have to stir it. So I'll have these recipes, of course, in the description. And I hope you guys enjoy them. Talk to you later. Hey guys. So I thought I was done with this video. But I thought I would bring you guys back. And show you my labels. Um, now I know I showed you the label on the old one. I did a few little changes. Because I realized I didn't have my address. On the label. Now. According to FDA, you e you have to either have your address or uh, your website has to be easily found, um, like you have to be in a phone book. So I always just add my address 
never had an issue. So these are the labels that I normally use when I do soap. These are the same labels. It took me some trial and error to find out how much a gap I needed to leave to where when I rolled it around my lip balm tube that nothing overlapped. So um, as you can see there's probably about a third of the label that is blank and here's my label starts out with the business name the scent I did vanilla custard because Eric says it's, it smells just like custard and then the ingredients uh, twisting the cap discontinuing and then I added the address and as you can see it goes right back like perfectly all the way around uh, like I said it took me some trial and error to figure it out when I first did it but now I have it saved yesterday I went ahead and I cleaned all of these lip balm tubes with alcohol I just stick it on there like that fold down the blank side and just run it around and smooth it down and I will shrink wrap these um, because I just like them shrink wrapped. Um, you do not have to shrink wrap them. You can also purchase labels that have a little notch on them that when you put it around here it gets like a notch that comes up and seals the lid to where somebody can't open it. So I was sitting here uh, I had labeled 10 of them and I was like you know what I'll hop on the video and I'll show them the changes that I made and I'll label some with you guys. So that's what we're doing. Just and I use uh, water weatherproof labels. <laughs> they are a bit more expensive, but I have found it's much better for things in the long run to spend a little bit extra <clears throat> on the label. Like I had a disaster a year ago, it's been over a year ago, with some labels at a show. My tent got blew over, um, <clears throat> all my displays got wet, and uh, it ruined like all of my labels. All of them. And I come home, I was really upset, and Eric was like, it's alright, just print new labels and I will work on uh, repackaging. So, we got it fixed, and I was only an hour late for setting up, or opening, shall I say. <clears throat> so, I, from that day forward, I said, well, I shall spend the few extra pennies for waterproof labels. <laughs> Never again is that happening. I was, it was, it was terrible. I don't wish that on anybody. So if any suggestion I can give to you is go ahead and spend the extra money. These labels I can get on Amazon for about 20 bucks for five, or for a hundred sheets. It's like twenty dollars for a hundred sheets, and now I pay. It's about fifty-five dollars for a hundred and fifteen sheets. So yes, it's it's a bit higher. It's a little over twice as much, but it's worth it. To not have to worry of damaged labels. I'm not looking at the camera, so I'm not sure if I'm in camera. I hope so. And like when I'm here at the shop, uh, when I just you know pack orders or whatever, I just keep my lip balm 
in little bags like this and then I just pull from the bags. I generally don't take my lip balm to shows. Around here they never sold so I never took them but Eric is making me a new lip balm display so I'm going to test out the waters and see if the display makes a difference and if the display turns out well like he wants uh, we will offer them for sale it's just with Black Friday and everything we're just you know there's a lot going on right now <clears throat> he's having a hard time getting time to do anything new um, he's wanting to make the cutters and it's just right now we we really don't have the time but I'm almost done labeling went through 30 Now you can buy labels specific for lip balm, but I feel like those are like perfect. Um, and I don't have to buy multiple size labels. So it's a win-win for me. I just have to make sure I get them on there straight to begin with. I cleaned these yesterday as in rubbing alcohol and paper towel. Just getting off any oil, lip balm stuff on the outside because I'm a bit messy. So I need to change my recipe to that it will do 60, my full recipe. I've got one, uh, the one that I told you guys yesterday that I wouldn't sell um, is in my pocket to get home with me. Noah used it <laughs> and he was like, oh, that's good. It tastes yummy. <laughs> I am an avid lip balm user, but I do not like lip balm that does not have a taste. I know you're not supposed to lick your lips or whatnot, but that's just one of the things that I can't help. So, lip balm has got to not be bland or bitter. I like some kind of flavor. And then, of course, you can make unflavored lip balm. Just plain Jane. Don't add any flavor. You do not have to have flavor. All right, guys. Almost there. Uh... I won't make you sit through all of these while I've been chatting. But I just wanted to show you the label, all that good stuff. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later.